Um, so I'm going to talk about generations of trans women in tech. Luckily, we've already had two other trans women talk today, at least. Who knows? Um, so that's really cool. I don't even have to like. I don't. I don't feel like I even have to introduce the idea that people's trans experiences build off of each other because Sarah's talk was so different from the other trans talk, and I'm, you know, and like obviously there's a progression there, right? And I'm going to document that and tell it to you all and maybe like inspire you to see how you could map this to other sorts of experiences, right? Um, so first, as an introduction, I have some preliminary things. Avoid direct quoting me. Usually try to take my, take my words and put them into your own words because I use a lot of identity reserved language on purpose. Um, this is not a talk about blackness. If this was a talk about blackness, there would be a lot of black slurs that I'd be using in the talk. But this is a talk about transness, so just watch out for that. Um, and also, I do this on purpose, right? I, I do this on purpose because I need you all to think about the identities of the people that are talking to you. I need you all to recognize that the people who are talking to you that are, that are different from you. You don't share everything, right? So I might be like, oh yeah, like I'm such a, like, a huge like, trans dyke, right? Like you don't call me a trans dyke, but you are aware of the fact that I am that, right? So avoid direct quotes. Okay. Um, and the other thing is that for, is that for other, pe other queer people, other trans people, I like to say that I speak to my own experiences I've had a very distinct set of experiences um, that I find in practice usually maps very poorly to other queer and trans people. Um, very poorly, like their experiences say the exact opposite things of what mine do, right? So I might say things like, oh, like I know trans women of this type who do this thing, right? But that's just how I'm speaking. I want to recognize that a lot of people have a lot of different experiences that really don't map to mine very well. Um, so me, right, I had a very, I had a very basic engineering upbringing for like, like a black kid. Um, I had a school, it was crap, there were metal detectors, there was cops everywhere, I got stopped all the time, I got arrested a bunch. Um, just like, just as a black kid, right, that was just my engineering student experience, but also I just had the basic things like I, I aced all my math classes, I, it's like I worked at NASA a little bit, I worked at like a factory for a little bit, like I just did basic engineering student things and I had a really simple life. Until I went to Reddit and I found out that trans lesbians exist. And then my <laughs> whole life just, yeah, like I was, I was bored, like I, it started because like I was like an engineering student and engineering students really like Reddit um, and you know, engineering students sometimes have problems so I was on the no life subreddit and then I saw someone in No Life subreddit, it was a dude, cis dude, talking about how like, he's totally a lesbian, and I was like, hmm. So I go to the lesbian subreddit, I was like, I don't know. And then I find trans lesbians, and then from there, I was like, wait, so if I can actually do this, if someone can actually become a trans lesbian, then I don't have to be what I am, right? Um, from there, that point, I was still like, I was actually still working at NASA at that point, and I was like, okay, so if I do this, I have to give up everything. Right, like I, everything, I have, everything I am now, something completely different, right? And from that point, I started mapping up what I wanted to be. So, what is it that I'm that I'm that I've moved to, right? Uh, the first thing is that I'm trans. I'm not gonna define being trans. I think we had enough of that today. So that's good. That's good, right? Um, for all intents and purposes, being trans is some kind of gender business. Um, and this is where the discourse starts. I'm a lesbian. I'd like to call myself panginic because lesbian is binarist on both ends. Um, and panginic is my word to subvert that. But basically the same thing. Uh, I'm polyamorous, but more like a relationship anarchist, which is polyamory, but a bit different. More anarchist, stick polyamory, but anarchist. I'd have to define polyamory for people who don't know it, and I will skip that. You can Google it. Um, that's enough of a discourse. Sorry if I was like, oh my god, I had this argument with this person on Tumblr about relationship anarchy. So sorry for any discourse I just presented to you. Now a more basic definition is that I work in tech. Um, my definition of tech is that most of my friends work in the Django, Rails. I work on Bundler and Ruby Gems. I know a lot of people work at NPM. I think I know an entire NPM team, which is kind of cool. 
Um, so yeah, that's just my, my technical context, right? Um, so now, now with the introduction, the context definitions, we're gonna get to the story. Um, the story is that poly trans lesbians in tech, um, poly trans lesbians in tech have really strong culture. They build upon each other really strongly. They, like, there's a lot of interactions there that I don't see in any of the other communities I've been in. And the amusing thing is that this only really activates when you hit all three of those things. Polyamorous trans lesbians, right? Which is like, I think, one of my, the greatest things that I've understood now that I started learning about intersectionality is that like, once you start putting all these identities together is when you start getting this great, this great effect. Um, me personally, I'm also black, which, oh my gosh, right? Um, but, and I'm autistic, which is funny because this is tech. Like, what? I'm autistic, of course, okay, whatever. Um, <laughs> by comparison, I'm talking about being an autistic rag trans lesbian, and here we have this very bad diversity data. You're not supposed to look at it, it's just bad. This is Twitter, by the way. <laughs> um, I love Twitter, the platform. Hey, Twitter, this company. Um, so, this, all this happens in tech. And here's why, right? So we, have, so we have tech, and tech is great because tech has furries. No, this is good, really, promise. Because the idea of being a furry, no, I'm not, I'm not getting into that. Um, but seriously though, the idea of a lot of these things is that they present, they present spaces that, they present niches that trans women feel really easily, right? So the idea of a furry is that a furry is non-human, right? If you're already, if, if the idea of a trans person is already non-human to you, from that to being like a cat is a short jump, right? And this is, this is why I find that, I, I find that trans women inhabit like furry spaces easier than the average cis person. And there are a lot of furries in tech. If you don't think there are a lot of furries in tech, you haven't been paying attention. <laughs> the second thing is that tech is really good at remote work. So like even if you're like super like hella trans, people can't tell your gender when you go to coffee ever. Like if you work remote, it doesn't really matter. Like you can look at, you can look like whatever you want when you're working remote, like who cares? Um, and another thing about tech is that I find it's usually fairly casual as opposed to the other industries I've been in. Um, like, like rocket science, for example, is really stressful. Um, Particularly when uh, like a botched calculation on a rocket means that your team explodes. Like, by contrast, tech is a lot less stressful, and I find that that makes it like just like in in ways it it lets your it lets technical teams handle things that I feel like more strict teams when I was in like like rocket science or chemical engineering. Like I feel like tech teams handle that better, um, and that's 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 the whole thing. Like it's that I feel like they will tangentially accept trans is better because they are usually more casual. Um, and since you can self learn a lot of the like the tech computing disciplines, like obviously there's all these boot camps and stuff. Like there's no boot camp for getting into NASA. It's you have to go to college, right? But since there's a boot camp for learning Rails or the Django, like a lot of trans women can like they can ha since trans women have to restart their life, they can go to a boot camp and then they can learn Rails as opposed to like having to go to the college thing, which is more expensive, it requires more social infrastructure, all of that stuff. Um, yeah, there's probably other things. As you saw from a, a graph earlier, there is, I don't know, actually no, it, it, you didn't specifically see this graph, but there's a lot of trans women in tech, like I don't know why. There's probably like other like deep sea to psychological reasons, but yeah, that, that's a good, there's a good analysis to be had there. So, when you start having trans women in tech, has to start somewhere. So the generation one Cybertran, this is another word you should not use. Um, generation one Cybertran is when you're like, it's, it speaks a lot to what Sarah was saying earlier when like you have to come out and you don't know if it's gonna ruin your life. Like you, you have to come out when you have like $50,000 in the bank because what if they fire you and like, do you wanna be homeless? No, so you have to wait until you can like pay your rent safely, you don't know if you're gonna lose all your friends, what if you have to like move to Alaska, like you don't know, right? Like there's all these unknowns and it's really hard to like conceptualize yourself as a trans person in your environment because there are no role models. There's no social infrastructure for people doing the thing you wanna do, which is like maybe you wanna come out or maybe you just wanna help people, right? To help people, you have to find people which like incurs the risk. Like helping people makes you vulnerable to what you wanna help them with, right? And this is the experience of being like the trans woman who's like first to your environment. It's really risky, it's really vulnerable, and yeah. 
Um, Claire speaks to that more in, in length in her earlier talk, so I don't really have to go into that more. From here, I want to talk about how you go from there, and I want to touch on how I use the word generations here. I'm not necessarily implying that like every single, like in every single community, like there's, like, there's never going to be a person who wants to save $50,000 before they come out. Like 100, 200 years from now, we're being trans and afterthought, there's probably still going to be one, someone who wants to save a ton of money before they come out, right? I'm also referring to the fact that the first people who come out have to have that safety blanket because if, if, if you're like the first person to come out as like, I don't know, autistic in the industry, you don't know if everyone's going to fire you, right? So you have to be conservative. There is like an enforced conservativeness, right? But the second person who comes out, they can be a bit more liberal about it. And this is what I mean by generations. As generations of trans women come out, interact with their environment, and form their community, we get more, we have the ability to be more open, right? And this is where I started describing myself. As a generation two cyber tran, um, my generation one, my mom, was, she's in Ireland right now, you might know her. Um, yeah, so now I'm generation two, like I had my mentor. I first, I started getting into tech with a lot of people, like including Ash. Um, but it didn't really click until I had other trans women and like a trans women of color here and there to like help me and provide the example of like how my gender should interact with my environment, right? And she was like, yeah, I came out in tech like four years ago and here's what you should do. Um, don't talk about kissing girls in general chat. Like she told me these things, right? So I would know what I should and should not be doing and how I would come out in such a way that wouldn't explode my whole professional career, right? Um, so now I know this. Um, my future isn't necessarily guaranteed. There are a lot of things that I can do wrong. Um, there are a lot of ways that like my mentor, she didn't experience how the transness interacted with such and such thing, right? Um, but in general, I have a lot of guidelines for how to act because like as generation two trans women, like my mom did it, right? So I'm like, oh, well don't like do this thing. Um, and I find that really, I find that really valuable. Um, and that's a, that's a thing that happens in a lot of communities. Like, I don't know, if you just got to the U.S., like, you know, your parents did this, so you know what not to do. Um, yeah. And when you start getting into Generation 2 people, um, that's when you can start coming out a lot more openly, and that creates a certain economy and a flow of resources around trans women and a greater community and how they interact with each other. So. I'm gonna describe that economy right quick. Um, this might sound like some other community you've been in, but this, the things I describe are very specific to trans women. Um, so as you might know, a lot of trans women are sex workers because oppression, and that's the thing that we force upon us. I don't, I don't particularly subscribe to that narrative. I use the narrative of trans women in our economy, what we need to do is we need to respect sex workers. We need to make sure that they are equal to us. We don't try to put a positive ourselves as better than the people who they came out and they didn't have any money, so now they're a sex worker. Like, you're not, you're not better than that. That can happen to everyone. We enter into a contract with our sisters who are forced to do work that we don't have to do, and we respect them. This keeps us all grounded, right? And that's really important. It's really important that we all remember this. It's also important that we have a base. The base of the trans women community I usually define as like trans women who are working class. It's so very like Marxist, like the workers, like the writers, the artists, the service industry employees, the people who do jobs that don't necessarily pay a lot and don't necessarily have a lot of like guarantees. These are the people that I want the trans women in tech to work for. These are the people I want people in tech in general to work for, but I want trans women in tech specifically to acknowledge their skills and like have a, and feel like indebted to the trans women who make the core of our community. Right, so if someone's like, yeah, I hate working at McDonald's, but I have this friend who works at New Relic and they help me out a lot, like I want you to feel linked to that because it helps us create a greater sense of community. And also there's, there's the idea of like, there's always new trans women coming out into the world all the time, right? Um, so it's, it's like a, it's a community with turnover, I guess. Like a lot of trans women, like they come out and then they experience tech and they're like, Oh, I like, I like the experience of being out or I don't and I just want to work in the corner all the time, right? So I feel like in any given community that has like a social, a social context of like people moving in and out of it, it's on everyone's best interest to just present your best self and then be open, right? Just to be inviting because you want to show people that something good can happen, right? You want to create 
Generation 3 Cybertrans, which I, I don't know a lot of people who could be described as this. This is sort of the idea that you have a trans woman who, like, her mom came out and her mom's mom came out. So there's not really a lot of situations that she's going to hit that her, her mothers didn't, right? This, this is really, it's like, there's a lot of really well thought out, like, like mentoring schemes and like generation three trans women has like access to organizations. She knows trans thrive, she knows trans hacks, she knows like all of the things offhand. Um, if suddenly her boss is really trans misogynist, she already knows about transgender law center, probably already has their email address. Like it's, everything is fairly set out for her, which is good because then you can get into the idea of like longevity within your community, right? This is, this is the point that I want all trans women to reach the point where they have other people that they can rely upon to, to help give them guidance in their negative experiences and they have the comfort of being out in their gender to do whatever they want. Like if whatever they want is to be stealth, then like that's cool, right? If they wanna talk about how to trans all the time, that's cool. And they need like a roadmap of how to do that. And this is why I have the concept of a generation three trans woman. Um, where we want this to go, where I want this to go, personally, right, is that I want people, I want people to be like, oh yeah, this is a trans woman, she transitioned, and now she was like medical care, and like, that's fine, right? Like, I want the trans woman with like the side cut and the cyber tattoo, which if you know that person, they're really cool, right? Um, <laughs> like, I want her to just go to work, and they're just like, oh yeah, she's trans, she's like literally a computer, it's really nice. Right? Um, I want the trans woman like me where I'm like, I spend 10 hours a day like writing Python in a, ho in a hoodie in a corner. Like, I just want that to be like a chill thing that people do, right? And this is, this is, this is what I want for every person's like little sub community where they have like layers upon layers of the broader, the broader mainstream culture has interacted with their like, as the aspects of their identity in such a way that they can do whatever they want. Like, if, you're, if you just immigrated to the U.S., you have a lot of other people who've immigrated to the U.S., and they've shown the broader community how to immigrate to the U.S., so now you can just be whatever you want outside of an immigrant. It doesn't, like, define your experience. So, yeah, that's, that's why I like to define this idea of generations of trans women in tech. Um, to summarize, people survive. The world sucks, but people survive it. People survive it with help from each other. People survive it with creating communities. People survive it with really strong culture. There are a lot of people who have to come up with a very specific culture for how they survive and how, how this informs the survival and how to help other people live their lives and just have basic lives or extravagant lives or whatever they want. This is just how people survive, right? And I want you to think about how you would survive if you suddenly were, I don't know, you had to be nothing and now you wanna be in a circus troupe. Like, how do you do that, right? Think about survival and recognize that trans women have a really strong survival narrative. This is where I got this from. Um, I love Tumblr. I love that I got the discourse made me in this talk. I love that no one groaned at me. So, <laughs> thank you.